I'd like to call the October meeting of the Hudson River Black River Regulating District to order. Um, roll call, Mr. Furrer. Mr. Chairman, multitasking. 1033. Close enough. 33. Mr. Pickle. Here. Thomas Stover. Here. Albert Hayes. Here. David Bergstress. Yep. Mr. Nettle, Mr. Rosenstall. Are excused. Michael Clark. Here. Robert Leslie. Here. Robert Fulton. Here. John Hudson. Here. Richard Farrar. Here. Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Uh, we need a motion to adopt or revise the meeting agenda, and we do have the need to go into an executive session at the end of the meeting to discuss personnel and litigation issues. Uh, motion. Make, I'll make that motion. Do I have a second? A second. Any discussion? Mm. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Um, next is uh, the introduction of guests, and we have one speaker this morning. Um, uh, Arthur Ambrosino has asked for about 10 minutes of the board's time to discuss this. The floor is yours, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm going to deepen the great second by the way. I want to do it in partnership with you guys. It's going to be done. The minerals in the lake are so strategic and so critical. <coughs> say that uh, this lake will be deepened, and I want to tell you why. <clears throat> Besides the fact that the minerals are critical to our high-tech way of life, about two years ago now, OGS issued some draft legislation draft legislation is going to take the royalty, mineral royalty fee and hike it up in the Great Saginaw Lake to between 75 and $85 billion. Did you, say, did you say billion? Billion. Okay. That may sound like a lot of money to you, but I think there are a few things that you need to understand. First, the only thing that will be done on the lake will be to sand harvest the heavies. Some of the lights have great value, but let's just talk about this pool of minerals. This, this pool of minerals is, uh, contains several species, all of which uh, I'll get into more detail with you. Uh, that's the only thing that will be done on the lake. This pool of minerals 
it just has an or un, un, uh, un, uh, divided by species is worth an, an average of five to six hundred dollars a cubic meter. When you take this pool of minerals and bring it into the second phase, you separate each mineral by species. The minerals then become worth in the range of five to seven thousand dollars a cubic meter. The third phase is to, once you have these minerals separated into species, is to break them apart or process them into their individual elements. Some of the minerals in the lake Twenty to seventy thousand dollars a metric ton. Then these minerals, these elements, and the fourth phase, if you uh, make product out of them, the numbers get much, much larger again. So it's important to understand that. Numbers for the first phase are the numbers that I'm glad to share with you. And um, and um, those those minerals. first pool of minerals. That's the only thing that we're going to do out on the lake. Uh, there'll be large wash plant operations out there. The people will see them. Uh, I've already started the public participation phase. Uh, talking to the shoreline property owners around the portion of the lake that will be deeper. I set aside $8 billion for those 550 individuals. And that means each one of them will get about $250,000 a year for the, of the project, which will take about 20 years. Now, a conventional deepening of this lake would take 50 to 60 years, but I have a, a, a method to do it much, much faster. It's all a lot of that stuff I want to share with you guys, but um, <coughs> it'll, I think that, uh, uh, for the time that I have, that'll have to come uh, some other day. Uh, I believe that the like amount of money should go to the board, should go to the, the regular board. I don't want any money. Uh, all I want is the um, right to claim what I, I'm really all about, and that is uh, this is the first project in the world ever to create freshwater impoundments and completely pay for them. It can be done in four to five thousand places in the United States, and it can be done in tens of thousands of places around the world. I also want full credit for everything I leave this day. I'm going to take the lake from 280 billion gallons to over 
over 700 billion gallons. I'm going to, uh, uh, there are several other important things that I'm going to leave the state. Um, as I say, um, I'm looking for the board to consider a partnership with me. Uh, you can decide the numbers yourself. couple of new board members, certainly um, I don't think we can consider any resolution today. I mean, we need to start right. this a little bit. Uh, right. Um, <coughs> um, uh, I, I, all I want you to do, you don't have to say that you're going to partner with me. I just want, <coughs> to, want you to say that you're going to consider partnering with me. Well, and I think that's open for the board. You know, the board's going to discuss it. So. Okay. Anybody have <coughs> Uh, just as I don't know where it belongs, uh, uh, I have been, a, we have some new board members, and I have been over, and I have some committee assignments. I, I just want to kind of go over those now. Uh, just chairs. Uh, governance committee, uh, Mr. Rosenthal is going to chair that committee, and the uh, members will be on it. Uh, finance committee, uh, I've appointed Tony Netto as the chair of that committee. Audit committee, Mr. Burke Stresser, sitting to my right, is going to be chairman of that committee. And the uh, people who are on those committees will stay on the committees. Um, maybe there'll be more than two people on a committee. <laughs> <laughs> um, <clears throat> uh, number six, uh, capital projects for bonding. Didn't, did we just? Take the table. Oh, okay. Well, this is actually the secret discussion if we want to further that. Do we need to determine the type of project it is right now, or is there no hurry on that? Uh, with respect to Hawkinsville. Yeah, with, with respect to Hawkinsville, I think I'm pretty confident it's an unlisted action. Right. Uh, we're basically reconstructing a portion of the dam, uh, <clears throat> extending. Or just upgrading it to meet, meet right. I mean, present standards. Obviously, Rob can uh, describe better than I exactly what we're doing. Um, it's it to me it it is not going to be. I don't think a type one action. No. I don't think there's a significant impact on the environment that we're looking at. But it's also not on the type two list, <clears throat> which means. It's an unlisted action. Uh, we could do an uncoordinated review. The danger in that is that if some other agency comes back and says, eh, wait a minute, you didn't, you didn't consider these impacts, uh, you know, we would have to then go back and consider those impacts before we could move forward. Um, I don't think we're going to get a whole lot of pushback from DEC or the Army Corps or the town, for that matter. Um, but the simplest thing, the, the most uh, conservative approach, is to do a coordinated review with those other entities. Um, at that point, uh, what we would do is send a lead agency coordination letter with our part one uh, form, which is basically the project information with that, we'd also send the Kleinschmidt study, uh, which describes the project. 
Um, and because we have prepared one, our part two, our environmental impact form part two, which <coughs> is our assessment of what potential things, uh, what potential impacts are out there. Um, the, the recitation of those impacts, I think, uh, you know, will help speak volumes to the other agencies that are looking at it. Uh, basically, it's just a matter of executing the form, sending it over, and waiting the 30 days to get a response. <coughs> if we can get a response from those agencies before the 30-day period, we could uh, be in a position to take an action, adopt a resolution with respect to the potential impacts and conclude the seeker review at the November meeting. If not, we'd have to wait for December. Weeks. Okay. Right. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, so we don't really need, do we need to take? There's really no action at this point. Oh, okay. So you guys are just going to send out the letters? And Does the board need to take action in order to issue the documents you spoke of? The, their letters to the other agency? Uh, no, I don't think they do. You don't need our blessing okay. or authorization? Or, or, it's part of the process. Part of okay. the process. Yeah. Good. Okay. Well, um, need a motion to approve the September 9th regular board meeting minutes? So moved. Mr. Silver. Need a second? Second. Mr. Hayes. <clears throat> any discussion or corrections? No, I didn't see anything. If not, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Report of uh, Executive Director. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, my report is in here. Um, Page 32. Thank you. <laughs> to that cursory report, I would just okay. add that, uh, that, I, that, again, it seems never-ending and always, uh, much of the time is spent in uh, certain uh, large amounts is spent in discussion of litigation and, uh, with our uh, general counsel. Uh, also, uh, a significant amount of uh, time this month has been uh, spent discussing cash flow with our CFO, which we will talk about later in the meeting, uh, with uh, some recommendations. I did attend last, uh, on the 10th, when was that, last Friday, uh, the annual dinner for the uh, Great Second Dogger Lake Association. Uh, as I mentioned, I make a habit of only whenever I'm invited to any of the lake interest groups. And uh, four degrees, I would continue to do that. I think it's a good thing uh, so that people have access to the regulating district. Also, uh, and this one's a shocker, we have a new vehicle in the regulating district. I heard that. For the first time in six years. Uh, it is a white Ford Explorer. And yes, it's white. And it's, I don't know if it's a 14 or 15, nevertheless, it's outside. 15. I think it's 15. 2015. Really? <laughs> Which brings me to my question. Is we this, is they know we have it? <laughs> Actually, yes, they do. Uh, <laughs> Because we walked from state contract, it was in the budget. Uh, more vehicles were in the budget that we have not purchased in, in the current. Um, having said that, the intent of purchasing this one is to replace an, a considerably older vehicle, the 2006 Jeep Grand Cherokee that everybody's <coughs> seen and been tortured to ride in at one time or another. Uh, that now is, again, as I said, it's a 2006. It's been in the fleet for... Mm -hmm. Honestly, you do the math, more than eight yeah. years, 110,000 miles. Um, the, uh, the purpose and the plan behind purchasing new vehicles in our fleet is, not, is to have a zero increase in the total number. <clears throat> so I would recommend that the regulating district dispose of that vehicle. Um, and I believe the mechanism to do that is by seal bid or uh, advertising right. the contract reporter, yeah. we need to do that. Right, the budget has sale of surplus already in it, as the board is right. So we've already taken action in terms of setting up a uh, 
asking for bids, which won't happen until later this month, for that vehicle. So it'll be in the two district papers. So then we would, at, at that point, it, potentially bring those, we would bring a bids we receive back to the board. We would report to the board yes. the results of the bids. Correct. Okay. Okay. Uh, Sounds good. All righty. So there is that. And lastly, uh, for my report, uh, I wanted to state that uh, on the 9th of October, we did receive um, a, a report from the fact finder from uh, Public Employees, Employees Relations Board, PERB, uh, that fact finder's report is a result of the impasse between the regulating district and CSCA uh, in contract negotiations. Uh, keep in mind we have a dozen um, CSCA union employees in the regulating district. Uh, that report essentially recommends that uh, uh, if I can go to uh, accept all the, the, if you can think back to, and I don't have it right in front of me, the terms of the, the, what the board directed me and the director uh, a few months ago um, to uh, reject uh, one condition of a, of a tentative settlement um, and accept the others, the, the, the terms that were accepted were a four-year contract um, ending in 2016, June 30, 2016, and zero in the first year, $1,000 cash in the second year, not on base, 2% in the third year, 2% in the fourth year, uh, adding two currently non-union titles to the union. Um, Of course, the, the longevity, uh, the, the longevity was uh, discussed uh, at uh, an increase of uh, $400 to each step. That was at that time, but that's the one point the board rejected. Um, and the, the difference between where we were at that, where the board was at that point, and the, and the, the fact finder's report, the report recommends that the or to implement uh, or agree to a contract that includes those the four-year increases the way I spelled them out, two titles, and uh, with respect to the longevity payments to union members to uh, for the first year of the contract to increase those steps by $300 and for the second, third, fourth, and into, well, perpetuity at that point, um, and bump that step up another $100 to the $400 and uh, that is really the difference. Again, it comes back to longevity. Um, where we're at at this point is I need to, uh, uh, we need to respond to this report um, in writing. Uh, and my recommendation to the board is that Our letter state that uh, that the, if the board agrees, um, the letter accept the terms of the uh, the salary, the four year salary increases, the four year contract, and the, the two titles in the union, but um, not accept the recommendation to increase longevity. And uh, if that's the if that is the opinion of the board, then I would. I'll respond to any way you want me to, but that that, uh, that would be my recommendation to not uh, uh, agree to increase in the longevity. <coughs> well, how's the board feel? Is this something we want to discuss in executive session before we vote on it, or do we want to? I think, I think so. Yeah. I'd like to. Okay, so we will table that for our executive set. Hold on. Just so then we would be conducting business. business will yes. Come out. Yeah. And then we'll come out and make that motion. Okay. Okay, any, any other questions for uh, 
Mr. Clark? Nope. Not right now. Okay, we'll move on to contracts. Uh, resolution to engage the legal services firm to defend the NIMO cases. And you're up again. Yeah. Um, oh, it says Mr. Clark on here. But I, oh, it does. No. Go ahead. You can I'm, I'm I, did, I, I thought that was strange when I saw it. But. Uh, I changed it up. Before you, there's a resolution um, oh, to engage Gervin and Falazzo uh, and Albany Law Firm and uh, outside legal counsel uh, to represent us or uh, continue our representation in the NIMO, ongoing NIMO litigation. Um, if you'll recall, um, Brown and Weinrob uh, has been our uh, outside counsel that's been representing us in this matter and have notified us that they'll uh, effect, essentially from now forward would be unable to represent us or continue to represent us. And you can probably add more detail if we need to, but that's the gist of it. Yeah. We need additional outside yeah. counsel. The, the gist of it is that that Brown and Weinrob, who were great, mm -hmm. did, a, did a fantastic job on the NIMO litigation, uh, brought us through filing our motion for summary judgment in the federal court uh, to dismiss the two remaining claims up there. Took us all through discovery, handled all of the depositions, and uh, we've spent an enormous amount of money defending this, what I consider, spurious lawsuit, mm -hmm. nonetheless. Um, our able litigator left to become general counsel at NIPA. So when he left, Brown and Weinrub no longer had a litigator of note who could handle a case of this complexity. Uh, and rather than try and scramble and hire somebody, Brown and Weinrub asked to be relieved from the contract. So we went out, we looked. Uh, we talked to the board about looking. Mm -hmm. uh, we found uh, a number of firms that had responded to us previously. We added in some uh, MWV firms. We did a search for MWV firms in the Capital District area. Uh, we found one firm that uh, did have the litigation expertise that we needed and was an MWV firm. We contacted that firm. We were pretty excited about going in that direction. And after about 48 hours, they came back to us and said, you know what, we've got a conflict. We can't jump into this litigation. They must have another client who is on the other side of this matter. Whether it's NIMO or an affiliate of NIMO, we don't know. But in any case. So they bowed out. None of the other firms that we contacted uh, gave us a responsive bid. And Gervin and Falazzo agreed to hire one of the uh, associates who had helped with uh, matters at uh, Brown and Weinrock. He had, he had helped draft the papers and compile the data and compile the documents that go with the, the filings. Our hope is that in choosing that firm, one, we, we satisfy our, our RFP problem, uh, but two, we get somebody who already has some understanding of the litigation and we don't have to start from scratch paying them by the hour to learn the file. Um, so Gervin and Falazzo is the firm that was responsive. They've agreed basically to extend the same terms uh, as far as hourly rate, uh, do a blended rate at 210, uh, which is a great deal. It's the same rate that uh, Brown and Weinrob used. They used it because Sherman had come to Brown and Weinrob. Mm -hmm. Sherman had used that same rate when he was at Crane, Parenthe, and Sherman. Uh, and so that, that rate has been around for quite some time. Uh, so we're, we're pleased with that. The matter at this point is before the federal court on the motion for summary judgment. There's a cross motion for summary judgment. 
uh, by NIMO. If we win the motion, great. NIMO may appeal it, and NIMO may <coughs> decide to continue to pursue their state court Article 78 proceedings, which basically are very similar claims. Uh, and Gerber and Falazzo's scope of contract would cover us in any of those contingencies. Right now, we've put a $40,000 not to exceed on this contract, which should be adequate in the event that yeah. NIMO goes through with their motion, mm -hmm. even if they appeal the motion, and we submit a motion to dismiss in the state courts. Um, if we get into greater discovery at the state court level, or we end up taking this up through the United States Supreme Court on appeal, which I can't imagine that we would do that, uh, or we end up going to trial in the state court, this is gonna cost significantly more. But for right now, $40,000 should cover us for the next foreseeable future. Ballpark it for me. How much money are they fighting to save, get out of? I mean, what does the, what does the NIMO's amount? Of, what is what, what is the responsible amount Niagara Mohawk is? Annually. Yeah, annually. Uh, there's two two elements to I'm that. Curious. Two answers to that question. One is NIMO's joke. seeking basically, I think it's six million at this point okay. in assessments that they have paid in the Hudson and Black River mm -hmm. that they would like to get back. They're also seeking to stop assessments in the Black River area from this point Four. forward. So to the extent that they can get those eliminated, mm -hmm. just got to project out the number of years right. that okay. we go. I mean, so it's, it's difficult to put a figure on that. We have spent in the nature of one point four million dollars on this litigation. Mm -hmm. NIMO has spent oh, a lot more. an amount. We don't know. Right. I suppose somebody could, you know, uh, ask the PSC to make NIMO figure it out. Um, but every dollar that could be rigged out of this wrung out of this case, I believe NIMO's counsel has managed to do it. And you know we're a public authority on one side; they're a public utility on the other side. You know, if you pay a NIMO bill or you pay uh, a county tax bill at this point, you're paying for this litigation. A portion of it goes to and, this litigation. And we are trying to kill it, and NIMO's counsel continues to pursue it. <laughs> so we very much hope that. Uh, our motion to dismiss is successful in the federal courts. This is it's getting ridiculous. Crazy. It's way beyond really ridiculous. Well, we need a motion then to hire this law firm. Yes. At forty thousand dollars. Right. I'll make the motion. Mr. Burke. Second. Mr. Stover. Any further discussion? No. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? So carried. Uh, second contract is resolution to award the Indian Lake Subservice Investigation. You're on. Thank you. I did hand out a memorandum <coughs> from myself, which also includes the resolution. Um, in summary, Bergman Associates is working on the first engineering assessment at Indian Lake, uh, included in their uh, scope of work was a development of a subsurface program to investigate uh, conditions at the dam, the earth embankment, as well as the uh, concrete stone dam. Uh, that testing investigation program would provide needed information, complete their stability analysis and seepage analysis of the structures, uh, again, consistent with DEC's regulations for engineering assessments and they provided us uh, a plan and this, the technical 
aspects and specifications for that subsurface program that they recommended. We combine it with our procurement documents and uh, on September 19th, we contacted four MWBE firms in uh, an attempt to uh, solicit bids uh, pursuant to Article 15A, and uh, with our with the intent to purchase um, from either a certified minority or women-owned business, uh, and we contacted those firms. We ended up eventually actually receiving a request for bid documents from a fifth MWBE, actually a, a WBE, and we had set established a deadline of October 3rd. several weeks of opportunity. Uh, this is a fairly small job and, and uh, actually probably only required a few days at best to pull together a very good uh, bid document. But as of the deadline, which was extended by a few hours because we felt that there were a couple of firms that would come in at the last minute out of those that group of five. However, none did by the deadline on October 3rd. <clears throat> Um, at that point, I asked two firms who did respond in some form to our solicitation, that being Aztec and Atlantic, if they would at least issue a letter of intent. And they did that Friday afternoon on the 3rd, and uh, we extended uh, bidding until October 10th. Um, and fortunately, we did receive two bids. One from each of those two firms by 11 a.m. on October 10th. And, uh, that is a huge discrepancy. And, a, a discrepancy. Bids, and you'll see on the second <coughs> page uh, the, the two prices. Uh, Aztec Technologies came in at $189,744. After you estimated $33,000? We estimated $33,000. Uh, Bergman, uh, Ber Bergman actually uh, reached out to a couple other firms that worked in this field, got a general idea of the price. Right. They came back. I asked them what they felt the probable cost might be, and, and they felt in the 30s was probably about right. Um, uh, but Atlantic uh, came in at 47200 significantly lower than Aztec. So yeah. um, I think, uh, you know, we, I didn't specifically in ours. I don't know if Bergman did I mean, we used more recent data, although it isn't um, truly winter weather come the beginning of December. It's possible that it could be cold. And I think both Atlantic and Aztec uh, approached bidding from that perspective. And so that might account for some of the difference between what Bergman and our staff came up with the, the mid 30s uh, as compared to the 47, but uh, I, I think 47 is reasonable. Um, and uh, as such, the uh, staff recommends conditionally awarding the work to Atlantic Testing Laboratories and seeks board acceptance of our recommendation and authorization to form a contract to complete the work and authorization for the executive director to execute an agreement in the amount of $47,200. Not to exceed. Yes. Any further questions? No. If not, uh, entertain a motion to accept Atlantic Testing's contract or uh, to award a contract to Atlantic Testing. So moved. Mr. Hayes. I'll second. Any further discussion? No. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? So carried. Okay, staff and committee reports. Uh, first one is the Finance Committee. I think we just have to do number II, right? Correct. Uh, we need uh, the Finance Committee uh, uh, recommended to the full board and urges a motion to adopt the budget development schedule. I'll make that motion. Mr. Burgess. Second? Just second. Any further discussion? Nope. Nope. If not, all in favor, aye. 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 Any opposed? Um, General Counsel, Mr. Leslie. 
Uh, uh, my report is on page 36. Uh, the Appellate Division Third Department has now heard oral argument in both the uh, New York State Gas and Electric and Borlex cases. A uh, decision is expected in the next six to eight weeks. Uh, and now, I'm loving the sounds, so you gotta bear with me. Council for Erie Boulevard has indicated an intent to oppose the Ray Lane District's response to Erie's motion for summary judgment with respect to the Ray Lane District's affirmative case seeking a declaration that Erie's entry into the 2006 stipulation settling several lawsuits challenging the Ray Lane District assessments precludes any refund claim Erie may assert with respect to the Ray Lane District's headwater benefit assessments. Basically, in English. In English, yes. we filed an affirmative case against Erie. Erie made a motion to dismiss. We agreed with their first element of their motion to dismiss. And now they're opposing our agreement with their <laughs> That's what I thought. motion to dismiss. So, to the back that one. Yes. What we said that this 2006 stipulation precludes them securing a refund from the, the uh, overage between the assessments and the headwater benefits. That was tied into the extension on the water agreement? Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That 2006 stipulation did a number of things. Well, you know, it, it reduced their assessment. It made us uh, benefit all of the assessees by, by funding a pool to mitigate assessments, and it extended the reservoir operating agreement by six years from 2015 through 2021. So Erie made a number of claims in their motion to dismiss, one of which was that our uh, that, that the Federal Power Act preempts application of state law mm -hmm. and that the settlement was done under the auspices of that state hey, law. Okay. And therefore, the uh, claim or the, the, the 2006 settlement mm -hmm. was also preempted under that state law. So we said, okay, yeah, we agree. Knowing that complete preemption of that 2006 stipulation of settlement also preempts the extender of the reservoir operating agreement. And Erie has balked. They, they've sought leave and, and received leave to oppose that reading of their motion. Uh, we have now sought leave to uh, basically <clears throat> oppose their opposition of that reading of that motion. So that matter is still pending before the, the uh, U.S. District Court. So, the, um, so, so our water agreement is, except for the extension, is up this year? Next June. Next, next June. June, okay. Right. <clears throat> hmm. Um, yes. Interesting. I'd note uh, my participation in crafting our response to the OSC draft audit, which hasn't come out yet. Um, the, and my participation in, in uh, addressing the improper practices charge, which I suspect we'll talk about in executive session. Um, and uh, the fact finder's brief as well, uh, putting that together. Um, I guess I could answer any questions that anybody might have. Uh, I don't, don't have any. Anybody else? No, no, no. I want to here. <clears throat> Thank you. Um, Thanks. Chief Fisco, Mr. Ferrara. Mr. Chairman, my report can be found on pages 37 to 80. As always, I will focus on Page 37, the summary, 
report to the board. Uh, the independent auditor, uh, as I've indicated here, uh, I stated that they provided the draft. We actually received the final independent audit. Uh, the plan now is to have them, or him, Mr. Richard Leverton, a partner, present to the board at the next meeting in November. He hasn't. Uh, we haven't confirmed that. It sounds like that's the date we're going to. Not going to make him drive to Watertown in no, December, okay. and, which is the reason why it seems likely that he'll yeah. come next week. That's fine. <laughs> the next three meetings are not conducive to the kind of travel that he would, would be confronted with. Right. This this audit, as has been the case with all the audits, is an unqualified audit opinion. This one, however, is different from the others as there is going to be a component of it that restates 2013. There was an item having to do with taxes that wasn't recognized when uh, the former independent auditor and myself were reconciling um, all of the receivables we would have to write off that was pursuant to the consent agreement back in March of 2013. In any event, there was a misstatement of the write-offs, so we, we uh, didn't write off enough, which was fine. It's, it was basically a bookkeeping, it's a paper entry, uh, didn't affect cash flow. However, it was material enough to restate the financials. That'll be a footnote in the, in the uh, financials, and uh, in my opinion, and I think in any other finance person's opinion, it ain't a big deal. Mm -hmm. So. And I'm sure he'll get into that. So it looks like uh, November, and we'll see uh, how that works out. Compliance, and upon receiving the final, we did get all of our public authority reports posted. Everything up to 9.30 was posted as close to 9.30 as we could. The final didn't come until shortly after, again, because of the statement issue. Uh, in any event, they're all out there now. <coughs> That would be this inclusive list that is on uh, indicating my compliance reporting, the data request, investment report, procurement, annual report, and certified financial audit. Uh, below that, you can see we have numerous contracts in numerous stages. Uh, so, on contract, uh, from a contract perspective, we're, we're very busy. Uh, cash flow reports, I think uh, the Mr. Clark would like to get into a discussion on cash flow, so that's my report. If you have any questions, and we can move right into cash flow. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Ferrara. And, uh, in in uh, discussions with our CFO, uh, we've uh, identified that uh, given our uh, projected expenditures over the next, really goes out more than a year. Um, that there, uh, without any specific modification to uh, our intended plan to, uh, let me back up a second. If you recall, as part of the consent agreement um, the, 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 with the five counties for the Hudson River apportionment, the final payment to Saratoga County for their taxes uh, mm -hmm. back. 2009 to 12 taxes correct would be made next June 2015 uh, to the tune of 900 and right now it's estimated to be 930 to 950 um, <clears throat> accounting for the fact that that number has been drawn down a little bit each year due to the offset uh, the offset the fact that we assess more than we owe them in taxes and um, they've been applying that amount, and we've been applying that amount to that back number. Nevertheless, there's this there's this balloon payment uh, right now that's planned for June of next year um, that will cause uh, will likely cause difficulties oh, with some cash flow. It, yes, it would be a material significant interruption in cash flow. Okay. So uh, my thought, and I, I believe staff concurs with me that, uh, we're here to ask the board's uh, uh, permission to open discussion with Saratoga County to um, 
renegotiate that one item. Uh, and by that, uh, not in terms of the total dollar amount, but rather just how that payment's made and, and with the hope that we could break that up into right now three payments o over. I'm, just, I'm sure they're not going to mind. It's better than. That. I'd go ahead and open up the discussion, see what they say. Essentially, you break, break it up into three payments that work for our cash flow and that they will agree to. Um, the, part of the reason I bring this to the board now is in most counties are in there in their budget development right. process or well into it at this point. And, uh, you know, we're in middle, midway through October. We really need to do this right. or at least make that overture right. ASAP. Mm -hmm. um, and it may or may not have impact on it, but... Never, nevertheless, it, they, right, we want they are expecting revenue from that in, right. in their coming budget year. Uh, so in... It's appropriate and fair to uh, ask them all before they finalize any budget. Yeah, so you just need authorization? Or? I believe we just need authorization. Yeah, to just just go. Before to authorize you to go ahead that and No problem. Yeah, no, not at all. Um, let's have a motion to open up the negotiations. Oh, we County. Have a motion to it. Also move. You, you can do a well, it's, a, it, it's an item. It's uh, authorizing it's you to do it. It's a specific item to uh, a settlement agreement that okay. it probably doesn't hurt. Right. Yeah, we'll put it on record. Sure. So uh, you made the motion that authorizing Mike to open negotiations mm -hmm. on the with mm -hmm. Saratoga County. Uh, on that specific on that item. Specific on that, just issue. one specific Nothing item. Nothing else, just that specific yeah. item. Do you have a second? Perkstone. Second. Yeah. Uh, any further discussion? All in favor, aye. 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 Any opposed? <laughs> I made the motion. Tom made Mr. Stover made the second. Uh, so, any, so any, just the, the cash flow reports that you have in your right. packet this time around has the payment of the 931 split? Three ways. Three. Beginning June, another year out, another year out. Okay. See if they'll go. That for it. is probably right now, just based on what I know. And again, we mm -hmm. have the bond won't affect because the bond will support itself in terms of right. project. But the projects we have in line that Mr. Fulton gave me a very detailed spread on how those disbursements might happen. That's probably the best that we could do to maintain minimal very minimal disruption. But again, I'd rather get to a point where we don't even have to worry about minimal. Mm -hmm. So we all would. Yeah, yeah we all would. <laughs> we'll, we'll see how receptive they are. I assume this a lot of, some of this revolves around the refunds. Well that would be well that's an, that's one of the unknowns. That's out there. Yeah. I mean, there's certain items that right. you know I call unknown. Uh, um. Oh, I'm sorry. No, uh, just one more thing. On page, um, Mr. Pendleton, you want to? Because there are board expenses on that I just gave the board. That's a revision to what was on page 81. Mm -hmm. So that's what I need the board to. They have to be dealt with separately? Uh, no, it's one one report. Okay. You do not have to deal with them separately. So there's a revised total, which now includes Mr. Finkel right. and. Previously, Mr. Burks. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I'd like to motion uh, to authorize the payment of the board expenses. I make a motion. Mr. Hayes. Mr. Stover. Um, any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. Thank you. Um, Chief Engineer, Mr. Fulton. Thank you, Mr. <laughs> Chairman. Report begins at page 82. Summarizing September's operation, fairly dry, both areas, Hudson as well as the black. You know, I had 45 to 60% of historic average precip and uh, in turn uh, inflow, inflow at Great Sacandaga Lake and Indian Lake was approximately 54 and 67 percent respectively and still water inflow was approximately 60 percent of historic average as such continuing our releases dog met flow the 
those reservoirs, respective reservoirs, um, dropped a little bit below their uh, historic average or target elevations. Uh, but again, typically this time of the year we do get <coughs> some abundance of rain at some point, and uh, I'm still anticipating that Mother Nature will respond as it usually does and throw at us some rain. Um, if not, you know, we will we'll just adjust our releases and, uh, and work our way through the winter without right. the typical bump in our elevation that we typically see. And wait another year for the cranberries. <laughs> and wait another year. And, uh, um, you know, we'll be, we'll be well situated for, for uh, winter drawdown. Uh, unlike most years, and you can see in the graphs, uh, Six Lake is a good example. Uh, still water from last this past January through March. Uh, as a result of those fall rains, we usually work very hard to bring the reservoir back down to make room for the spring uh, runoff, and uh, and we won't have to worry about it quite so much this time. I think, unless for some reason we get. Uh, six or ten inches of rain over the month of November. But uh, given the temperature is starting to get colder, I'm guessing too that even if we do get extra precip sometime in November, early December, some of that's going to start to fall in frozen form. and It will not run off the same as it does if it had rained in the that's beginning, of, beginning of September. Yeah. 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 Especially with a forecast for next week, I think it's... Sometimes it blocked. falls and melts. Next, next week's yeah. forecast is uh, low, you know, in the 30s. It's, across yeah. the so it's, 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 it's winter coat and gloves. It's starting, yeah. so... Um, take any questions Feels if you like have it. any. Otherwise, that concludes my report. Any any questions? No. Sure. No. Nope. Hudson River Black River Administrator. Thank you, Mr. Hi. Chairman. Uh, my report starts on page 116, and I attended a FERT-required tabletop exercise for the Stillwater Dam EAP in Corrogan this past month. And Mike told you about the vehicle that we got. And the other thing is uh, the encroachment that took place on Great Sacandaga Lake. Um, DEC has NCON officers um, missed their, the encroachment has been paid by the property owner of $5,000 and Buddy's Tree Sir, or the contractor also paid $5,000 in fines. They both paid a fine. This with the trees that? You know, yeah. yeah. The NCON yeah. officer issued tickets to the, con the tree service and to the adjacent landowner and the, the folks, both parties paid the administrative fine rather than press their luck in court because of the um, risk that a, under uh, ECL the judge could assess them per stump, or which it, it was over a hundred trees or something. There was a hundred and sixty-two trees. Hundred sixty-two trees. Um, so. Eh, Having said that, the, uh, the reason I'm jumping in now is because these folks, um, the, the adjacent landowner, uh, they had bought a, another lot next to the current lot. They are front lot holders, front lot permit holders. Now, they bought another lot next to a piece of private property. Uh, they, had, they had applied for uh, an access permit for that uh, adjacent land for it's another hunt. I don't remember the width of it offhand, but, but they applied for it. They sent in the application fee. Um, at that time, we had written a letter and sent it back to them and said that we oh, sent the letter with the um, with their check mm -hmm. for the application fee back to them and said that we would take no action until this matter was resolved uh, with other agencies, DEC in this case. Um, so uh, it, my question, and the, the reason I bring this to the board is, um, whether, whether or not uh, we then notify them that we will now 
process an application for a new access permit or tell them that it's not going to be issued for a period of time. Whether whichever way we go, I, I strongly believe that we also ought to, uh, in that letter, make a condition of that uh, issuance whenever that occurs. Uh, make it a condition that they replant trees. They um, clear, generally, when things like this are done around the reservoir, it's so that people can gain that magical view that they want. Yeah. Uh, in this case, they cut off a point uh, or, or attempted to cut trees off of a uh, point. I don't know if it's an island. Sub, a lot of it's submerged most of the time, but mm -hmm. uh, they're working well below mean high water. They also removed trees upland, but still on the state land. Um, I strongly believe that that, that five thousand dollars shouldn't be the price for getting your view, yeah. um, if that's, that's a way cheap. to say it. Uh, not because of just that one particular case, but because it's uh, it's a bad message to send. It is. It's such a nice president. So I, I, get, grand, I, can, yeah. I can open up. So my, my, yeah. my question to the board is: it, it Would uh, should we um, process that, uh, uh, notify these these folks that we will now consider an application uh, for a permit with with conditions? Or yeah. uh, can we do that? Just put a stipulation on a permit application like that? I think we certainly. I think the board. I believe the board has without the repercussions. To do that. That's why I'm. Just what did they do with the trees? Did they sell them? Well, that's the that's an interesting question. Yeah. Um, I was actually involved in this one personally, mainly because I happened to be in the office, and we were, I, I went with a field assistant, uh, Dan Kiskus, late in the day, and we I caught the tree service guy skidding trees with a log skidder off the state land, and I mean a couple hundred yards off the state land. Hmm. Uh, with trees hooked up, he had a heck of a pile of logs, which appeared to be to be he was saving for firewood. Uh, we told him to stop work right then and there, and I specifically told him, with witnesses, that all logs uh, were to remain on site; that they were the property of the New York State. Two days later, they're all gone. Jeez. <laughs> we can't. Uh, and there were, and it was not a. We're not talking about a pickup truck load. We're, no. Uh, it, it was a significant, uh, it, it was probably a, a tractor trailer load. Thereabouts. Huh. Um, well, they ought to be sued for. Well, I believe that, the, the, I mean, he was, the, that, that contractor was nailed $5,000, which is, in my estimation, significantly more than. That, that, that individual would have received if he'd sold that for firewood. Right. Um, so he has been penalized, but um, the, the, <clears throat> the, the private landowner that adjoins the state land that, that has applied for uh, an access permit, a front lot access permit, we, we've told that we will not process it until such time as the matter is resolved with other agencies. And uh, that the board, you know, that the board would inform them at that time of your stance. Right. Um, no, I don't have any problem with that stipulation for the tree. Come to plant the trees back. No, I think the tree should be put back. I mean, I think five thousand is. You know, anybody, you're inviting anybody to say, okay, it's only going to cost me five thousand dollars to get the view. Okay, so we will uh, we'll uh, we'll notify the uh, that uh, private property owner um, of that, and uh, we'll, we'll proceed. And uh, we're going to require them to uh, plant a significant number of trees as a condition of the permit. Okay. And one other action that was required by the ECOs also was to hire a contractor to come in. Back drag, smooth out all the damage they did to the to the ground and stuff with ruts and stuff like that. Hmm. So that was supposed to take place beginning of this week with an independent another contractor, not the one that did the damage. So I mean, we're, we're making a, making a point of discussing this with you now, mainly because it's probably the biggest. Uh, 
I would say in seven years or more that I've been here, it's the biggest encroachment I've seen. At least that's my opinion of it. Um, but, but he paid his fine, mm -hmm. so he should be able to get his permit if he meets our requirements. Mm -hmm. And the last thing I have is uh, the photos I handed out earlier. Um, some work that we did on the downstream uh, embankment at the Conklinville Dam. And the first photo is showing the embankment before um, any work was done with the dowel valves open, showing the, uh, the water coming out of the dowel valve and the, hitting that riprap area on the other embankment. A lot of erosion. Yeah. And then photo number two, the second one shows you the embankment uh, kind of well, it was in June uh, with all the trees and uh, shows a little bit better down at the toe of it where they, there's not much uh, stone or anything down there. Uh, the third photo shows the uh, equipment and uh, guys placing the riprap in there. And this was all done by staff. We rented one the excavator that's in use here. And the other two pieces of equipment are district owned. Fourth photo showing the uh, project just about complete, and the uh, final photo shows a complete completed project. We put in about 3,000 tons of stone into that area. Uh, large, a large stone. So you just shove it over the bank and hope and let it. Well, fall. we dumped. We had the stone come in, and then we actually picked each piece with that excavator and placed it down in there so we could... Uh, some of those were over a thousand pounds. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And some of them were on the bottom. Who's operating the excavator? Dan was yeah. uh, operating yeah. that. So, uh, Good job. I remember you yeah, the guys, that. The guys did a great job on that. Yeah. Yeah, that's all I have for my report. I'll be glad to answer any questions anybody may have. Okay. <laughs> Any uh, board member questions, comments? No. Um, we need a resolution for the next board meeting. Is, is that in Saratoga? Saratoga is in Bolsa 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 Saratoga County Office. And that's also a Wednesday meeting. Make sure everybody knows. Yeah, that is correct. Tuesday is a 5th of November, which is a Wednesday. Yeah. It's also because of Election Day? Yeah. Yes. Uh, need a resolution to go into executive session? Right, I'll make, uh, make a motion to, for the meeting. For the meeting this yeah. in we'll be discussing uh, personnel issues, litigation. No, we, didn't do the, we didn't do the meeting. We'll do the, the meeting, meeting first. Oh, sorry. I made a motion for the, <laughs> for the meeting at Boston Spa on, on November. Okay, a second to that. Second. Excuse me. Ladies. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Now I need a motion <laughs> to go into executive session okay. to discuss uh, personnel and litigation and we may have a resolution we might have business. Uh, so we're going to conduct business, business we may be conducting so business meetings. after that meeting i'll make the motion mr stone a second oh. Daniel, I think it's mr. Burks. Mr. Burks. okay we are and uh um you know staff is invited to stay